It's been a while that Affinity version 2 has been out and it's also been a while since I've done a 7 things you didn't know about video. Let's do a 7 things about Affinity Designer version 2 you didn't know about. Alright, if this is the first one that you've watched in this series, then welcome. And if it is, if you want to, you can check out the other videos in the series, which are down in the description below. But let's just get started. So first, we'll start with something that some people may have already known, and that is studios. So in the past, if we wanted to open any of these little windows, which are called studios, for example, this character one, this symbols one, the color one, anything like that, what we would usually do is go over to view and down to studio. But if you look there now, it's not there. And this really threw me off the first time that I realized this. But in actual fact, and like I said, some of you may already know this, but for those who don't, if you head over to window, all your studios are now openable from here. Kind of makes sense because these are like little windows. They're not really a different view. So for them to be in window rather than view makes kind of sense. But if you go back and watch any of my old videos, if I say open the studio by going to view and then studio, instead of doing that, just go over to window and select the right studio this time. All right, on to number two, which is the new cat tool. Now, if you don't know, here is Affinity version one. If we right click on our shape tool, we've got all our shapes. If, however, we hold shift and right click on our shape tool, right at the bottom, you've got this cat tool, which when we select it, we can now make shapes of a cat really easily. And it's a pretty cool looking cat as well. If we do the exact same thing in Affinity version two, we've got our shapes right here. If we right click, we can see all our regular shapes. If we hold shift and right click right at the bottom, we've got our cat tool. If we select this, now we have a different looking cat tool, which I mean, it's up to you which one you like better, but if you still have access to Affinity version one and you want that cat tool, then make sure you copy and paste the shape into here and you can always create it into an asset. So if we've got our cat tool here, simply copy that, head over to version two, paste that in, and we've got our cat tool right there. Now saying assets actually brings me on to the third one, which again, if you didn't know about this, your whole world is gonna change. And that is content link. If you want a more in-depth explanation of what content link is, check out the video at the top there. But really quickly to go through it, it's a way of synchronizing assets, styles, and swatches and brushes between the three apps, Affinity Designer, Affinity Photo, and Affinity Publisher. Right now, in this assets panel right here, we have this little link symbol over the Affinity folder. What this means is, if I add an asset into here, which I'm gonna add this little cat in, drag that into there like that, we get our cat now. If we head over to Affinity Photo, the cat, has literally been added in there as we were talking. Now, if you do want to make something else into this content link, select the folder that you want, head over to the three lines at the top and just go to link category. Once you've done that, it'll be linked across all three apps for you to be able to use your assets, your swatches, your styles, your brushes across the three apps very easily. But like I said, if you want a more in-depth explanation, check out the video at the top. All right, we'll use these cats for the next one, which I think we're on to number four by now, which is adding multiple effects. Now, again, in the past, I actually came up with a hack to be able to add multiple effects, which was, let's say, for example, we wanted to add an outline to this cat. We would go down to the effects panel. We were going to add an outline. We'll make it bigger, change the color so it's a bit easier to see. Now, if, for example, we wanted to add another outline to this, we weren't able to do this in the past. So what we would have to do is make this cat into a group and then add the outline to the group. So that's the way that we would add two outlines to something. If we wanted another one, we would literally just add another group, add another outline and so on. Now that we're in Avinity version two, if we select our shape or in this case, the cat, and we want to add an outline to it, if we go down to the effects, let's add our outline. Same as before, we'll make it white. We've got our outline. You can see this little plus symbol, which literally says duplicate effect. And we can do this with the outline, the inner shadow, the color overlay, gradient overlay, and the outer shadow. So we simply hit this plus button. We'll have another outline, select that, change the color, make it bigger. We've got the next outline. We want another one. Let's make another one, make this a different color. Let's make it like a blue, make that bigger. And very easily we can make multiple outlines and keep our layer panel looking pretty smart because it's literally just that one shape. All the effects are in the effects. That actually looks pretty cool. Speaking of effects, this next one blew my mind. In the past, when you had effects on something, if you wanted to copy all those effects over, you would hit Control C, select your new object that you wanted the effects to be added onto, and hit Control Shift and V. That would add all the effects onto the thing that you had selected. Not too much of a hassle, right? But it's much easier to do in Affinity version two. Let's use these bottom ones. We have all our effects. If we head over to our layer panel here, you can see we have selected this rectangle right here and we want to 
add the effects to this white rectangle right here. All you do, click this FX symbol here, hold and drag, drop it onto where you want it and it's done. And that's it. It's like the simplest thing, but it's just mind blowing. When I realized that could happen, yeah, it's, I don't know what to say. There you go. Go forth and copy all your effects as, as much as you want. All right. As useful as that one is, this one's just as useful. So I think we're on to number six now. The number six is the scissor tool. Now we did a whole video about the knife tool and how great that is. And if you want to, you can check out that video up there. But the knife tool also has the scissor tool. So if we head over to our tools on the left, select our knife tool with these lines. If we select one of these, just like a knife would, you can cut this line by simply dragging a line across it and making a cut. Not too difficult to do, but when you've got lots of lines in lots of different intricate ways, you may not want to make a full on line. Instead, what you can do is if you zoom in just to make it a bit easier for yourself, if you hover over this, you can see the knife turns into some scissors. And all we would do is literally click where we want this line to be cut. Click, you'll see a node turn up. What we can do now is literally just break apart this. If we want to again, we could hover in the middle there until we see the scissor symbol. Click, move that out of the way. We've got another cut. So it's very easy to do. Here are some pencil lines that we made. Again, hover over it where you want to cut. Where the scissor symbol is there, click cut, and you've got two shapes. Now what's good with this, and it kind of depends on your preference, is that these two end up as one specific curve. If you look at our layer panel here, these are the lines that we've got selected here, this one curve. So if we make another cut here, you can see that the curve stays as one layer, even though we've got now three shapes within that layer. Now whether that's a good thing for you or not, it's entirely up to you, but that's where the scissor tool and knife tool differ. We've got these three lines here. We could cut this with a scissor tool here, and still we've still got one curved layer or if we make knife cut you can see now that it actually separates all of these into a different layer so we've got the two where we made the cut and we've got the two separate ones on the outside so the knife tool will separate them in the layer panel whereas the scissor tool won't and last but not least we've got quick grids you might be thinking what the hell is he talking about what i'm about to show you let's say for example we grab this rectangle shape so if we were going to make this rectangle we can literally just drag and kind of let go of where we want this if we don't let go however and instead on the keyboard if you press the arrow keys to the right you'll see that we can add multiple squares in a row and we can still resize these as we want so they are perfectly even squares not only that but if you press down the keyboard you can make a very easy grid where was this when i went line by line and made squares all the way across to make a, a grid of my own it was there i just didn't know this existed but now i've still not let go of my mouse we can create a nice little grid let go and you can see in the layer panel we've just created a whole bunch of squares in this orientation if we want to now we can actually group these together give it a stroke and we've got kind of our grid system right there very easily not only that though but it doesn't just work with squares we could grab any one of these shapes. In fact, let's use the cat tool. Make our cat, press right on the arrow keys, and we can make multiple cats. Press down on the arrow keys, and we can make a whole grid of cats, just like that, very easily, very quickly. So if you didn't like cats, we can do with the stars. Make a star, go across, go down, and resize how we want and we've got a whole bunch of stars so something very easy or something very useful there you go that's seven things about affinity version 2 that you may not have known about hopefully some of these were ones that you didn't actually know but drop down in the comments how many you actually did know and if there's anything that you found that most people don't know about drop those in the comments below if you haven't seen the other videos in the series they're going to be linked in the description as well if you like this video then make sure you give it a thumbs up hit subscribe for more videos like this if you haven't already check out this video right here and as always, I've been Brown Bear. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.